my channel just go with amreen today i am exploring a new country you've already seen i've taken the visa flight and flown and slept and oh my god it was so difficult but anyway <sighs> all those hardships were worth it because i am here finally in uzbekistan i have landed in the city samarkand which is one of its most beautiful cities in the country so uh, i'm already exploring this i did not even check into my hotel i straight uh, went from the airport to this place right behind me called registan <laughs> Registan Square technically is three madrasas it's a huge huge compound with three madrasas all built in the span of uh, 15th century and 17th century i'll tell you more about it i'm going with my guide now into the madrasas i will show you it is stunning architecture this is the first exposure to uzbekistan i am already blown away Let's go. So it goes without saying that this is the most popular place people visit when they come to Samarkand, Registan Square. You have to come here as early as possible in the morning, as soon as it opens, and the tickets to the place to enter is fifty thousand som. If you have not booked a private guide from before, you can get a tour guide for about a hundred thousand som, or an audio guide for about fifty thousand som. when you purchase your ticket as well 100000 som is equivalent to about 8 dollars and 50000 is about 4 The three grand structures around Registan Square are madrasas like I've already mentioned before. The madrasas are basically Islamic schools. In Persian, Registan means a sandy place. <laughs> the square is significant because it exhibits cultural traditions and exemplifies Uzbek architecture and urban development. When you visit each of these madrasas, you will find plenty skilled artists expressing their art in different forms. If you are a patron of the arts, then you can simply spend hours in awe of their talent over here you want to visit this place first thing in the morning uh, before it gets all crowded a very important information if you are coming to registan square on your own make sure you keep at least an hour or an hour and a half if you take the guided tour make sure you have 2 hours i'm not sure how long other guides give you but if you have a private guide then obviously you have the luxury of spending as much time as you want over here and coming whenever you want as well you can come here 8 in the morning when it opens or you can come at 12 noon like i did and skip the crowds basically next stop the amir temur mausoleum or gure amir complex this was built in 1405 and it houses the tomb of amir temur the founder of the temurid empire and his descendants I'm going to actually leave you to peacefully enjoy the architecture of this place because that's exactly how I felt in the presence of this mausoleum. Make sure to dress conservatively when you come visit this place. lunch it's already 2 pm it's past lunch time but i want to eat uzbek cuisine and one of their traditional foods that i've been looking forward to is plov and in samarkand they make that with lamb or beef so yeah so super hungry i woke up yesterday by the way and i'm going to sleep tonight just giving you some context of how tired and hungry i am when you visit samarkand have your meal at samarkand restaurant you're going to see why This is amazing.
Okay, after all that dancing, let's finally eat. We're having some noodle soup with chicken meatballs and cloves. Since I landed super early in the morning, I couldn't check in. So now we are on our way to the hotel to check in and uh, exchange some money. Since I landed in Uzbekistan, in Samarkand on a weekend, and apparently there are no money exchanges in Samarkand, you can only do it through a bank and they are closed on a weekend. So this was the most weird thing I've ever seen in my life. There were people like these holding bags of cash on the streets and my guide knew someone and that's how I got my $100 exchanged. Place called Orient Star Hotel. It is, I think, a three star hotel. I never look at stars to be honest. I only look at the rating on booking.com and read some of the reviews. This place is a little away from the city center, it's about two kilometers away. But this morning I took a cab to the city center where the bazaar is and it costed me 10,000 Uzbek som, which FYI is 88 cents and about three dirham. So you can imagine. So it's fine if you're staying away from the city. It, it's a modern looking hotel. It's nice. The breakfast was very nice. The only drawback of this place is that it has stairs. So if you are carrying heavy bags, good luck. But I think they do have bellboys to help you. Although I didn't take any help. That's all I wanted to say about my hotel. It's a very nice hotel. Orient Star Hotel. Back on the road and the next attraction we're visiting in Samarkand is called Shah Zinda. I will tell you more, but now let's explore. On a completely separate note, this is exactly why I don't like to visit any country during peak season. So much crowd. <laughs> I think the only time you can catch this place completely empty is super early in the morning. So it is this person who's buried back there in a little tomb uh, about like in the 14th or 15th century and he was the cousin of Prophet Muhammad. But as Islam started spreading in Uzbekistan, each king that came into rule kept adding on Muslims which is basically tombs and also mosques to this place and it became this huge expansive place which now has 26 Muslims and a few mosques. It's this big complex of tombs right now. It is so sacred that they actually say that if you come three times to this place it is equivalent to going to Mecca once. Now, I don't know how much truth exists in that but this is what they say. So it's a very peaceful place if you come at a peaceful time. Don't come here at 4 p.m. because that is when the entire groups of tourists come. Next stop, time for some shopping. We are headed to Seo Bazaar, which is also called Sia Bazaar. It is the largest bazaar in Samarkand, Uzbekistan. It's actually an agricultural market where you will be able to find fruits and vegetables. It reminded me of uh, certain parts of Bombay. <laughs> the little markets you would go to buy fresh fruits and vegetables looked very similar to that. It also reminded me a little bit about like Meena Bazaar in Dubai, but overall it was a very chaotic <laughs> and crowded bazaar with everything you will find all daily necessities there and it is located adjacent to the Bibi Khanam mosque which I didn't go to but please don't miss that you may most likely not find any souvenirs here like magnets and stuff but clothes and accessories bags everything uh, do not forget to bargain you could buy something for 40% less than what they have quoted for so do not forget to bargain hard so I did end up purchasing something from the bazaar by the way I got a t-shirt I never haggle I cannot haggle I cannot negotiate but I'm proud of myself <laughs> she asked for 40,000 some let's ask for 25,000 so I asked for 25,000 and she obviously didn't agree she laughed at my face and then I started walking away and she called me back and she actually gave it to me for 25,000 some I am so happy <laughs> 25,000 SOM is $2. I bought the t-shirt for $2. 
I have just arrived at this place called Samarkhan city and uh, of course when my guide described it, it sounded really nice that they've built uh, Khiva, Bukhara, they've mimicked all these little cities in this one place and I just arrived here and I realized I want to get out of here because first of all it's a Saturday, it's all with people, it's cramped with people rather and it reminds me of Global Village. It reminds me of Global Village and Dubai Park and Resort. I am not liking it. It is super touristy, although there are only locals here right now. But it is super touristy. I am so out of here. After that very quick and horrible encounter with Samarkhand city, we are ending the vlog and our time in Samarkhand with this unique attraction. I was surprised that my guide decided and he recommended that I visit the paper factory in Samarkhand. I know it doesn't sound like much, but I was surprised to know that Samarkhand paper is renowned in the whole world for its quality and durability. Due to not using any chemicals, this paper can last up to 300 to 400 years. Whew! Many Persian and Arabic manuscripts of the 9th and 10th centuries were written on it. The factory is located in such a cute, cozy place with shady trees, bubbling Siab river, country style house and all the equipment that you see over there is very alike to the one they used to use in 8th century. Wow! Okay, so now I am ending my Samarkhand in this lovely cafe that you see right behind me. It's called Art Cafe and it is located right next to Bibi Khanum Mosque, which is one of the very iconic places that you will visit when you come to uh, Samarkhand. But I did not visit that because I had very, very little amount of time. Plus, I did not want to only cover mosques, Muslims, mosques, Muslims. I wanted to do something different. Hence, we went to the paper factory yesterday. So that is all from me from Samarkand. If you guys like this vlog, you know what to do. Give me a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, adventures from this lovely country. I'll see you guys next week. Until then, take care guys. Bye. Cheers. So you obviously saw... <laughs> it is about the king who is from you i'll see you guys take care no um this is i already told you guys okay the first place we visited yesterday uh was something.